Hello everyone, what's up? This is Sir C, your science teacher and explorer buddy in everything science for grade school. This episode is for the grade 6 class and today we will study about the four different types of mixtures based on properties and characteristics, namely the solutions, suspensions, emulsions, and colloids. So if you're ready, let's start the engine and let's get science. <laughs> Solutions, suspensions, emulsions, and colloids. Just an FYI, we used to only have three types of mixtures before, which were the solutions, suspensions, and colloids. But came the time when emulsion was added to the list, but don't worry, I will explain to you how and why emulsion came into the picture as we progress with our discussion. First stop, solution. Solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Clear or colored, it is always transparent and light can pass through. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng clear siya tulad ng plastic cover na ginagamit natin or may kulay basta ito ay transparent or malinaw mong nakikita yung nasa likuran niya because light can pass through it. A solution can be made by combining different phases of matter. Pwede siyang gawa sa pinaghalong solid to solid or solid to liquid, gas to liquid, liquid to liquid, and so on. Solution is the perfect homogeneous mixture. Kasi perfecto ang pagkakahalo sa solution. It appears like a single phase substance kasi kumbaga sa ganda ng pagkakahalo niya, mukha na siyang iisang uri ng substance na lang. Attribute of a solution. Attribute is just another term for characteristic or sa Tagalog, katangian. For solutions, the substances mix do not lose their physical properties. We all know already that in mixture, it is just a physical combination of different substances. So physical lang. Walang chemical reaction na nangyari. Kaya ang mga pinaghalo mo, sila pa rin yun. Natunaw man or hindi mo na nakikita, sila pa rin yun. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng attribute ng solution that says, the substances mix do not lose their physical properties. Sila pa rin yun. Naghalo-halo pero walang nagbago sa properties ng bawat isang substance. Composition of a solution. There are two parts in a solution. The solute and the solvent. Solute is the part being dissolved in a solution. Kumbaga, ito yung part na tinunaw sa solution. While solvent is the part that dissolves the substance in a solution or ito yung ginamit mong pang tunaw. Example, nagtunaw ka ng salt or asin sa isang baso ng tubig, yung salt ang solute kasi ito yung tinunaw habang yung water naman ang solvent kasi ito yung nang tunaw. Gets ba? Solubility. Solubility is the ability of a solute to dissolve in the substance, meaning kakayahang matunaw ng isang solute. Soluble is if the solute can dissolve by a solvent or pwede siyang tunawin. Insoluble naman if the solute cannot be dissolved by a solvent or hindi siya kayang tunawin ng solvent. Again, kapag ang substance ay kayang tunawin, siya ay soluble. Kapag naman hindi siya kaya or hindi siya pwedeng matunaw, siya ay insoluble. Factors affecting solubility. There are three factors na nakakaapekto sa solubility or pagtutunaw ng isang solute. Number one dun is called rate of stirring or bilang ng paghahalo. Gaano ba kabilis or kabagal mo siyang hinahalo? Gaano kadalas? Ilang beses? So nakakaapekto yun sa pagtunaw ng solute. Second is temperature. Siyempre, kung mainit yung pinaghahalo mo, mas mabilis matutunaw yung solute. And lastly, particle size or yung sukat or laki ng solute na tutunawin. Kung pinong-pino or maliliit, mas madaling matunaw. Kung medyo malalaki, matutunaw din naman pero matatagalan bago tuluyang matunaw. So nakaka-apekto rin yun. Again, the factors affecting solubility are rate of stirring, temperature, and particle size. Concentration of a solution. Concentration of a solution is about how much Solute was dissolved in a solvent. Concentrated solution, this is the strong type of solution. In a concentrated solution, the mixture contains large amount of solute. Ito yung sinasabi nating sobrang matamis, sobrang maasim, sobrang malapot, and so on. Kasi sobrang marami yung nilagay na tinunaw. Masyadong maraming solute. Dilute solution naman, ito yung weak solution. In a dilute solution, the mixture contains a small amount of solute. So, konti lang yung solute or yung tinunaw. Kaya ito naman yung malabnaw or matabang. Diluted solution. A diluted solution is a strong or concentrated solution where more solvent was added to weaken the concentration of the solute. Kumbaga, 
concentrated siya, dinagdagan mo ng pangtunaw para mabawasan yung tapang ng timpla. Pag ganun ang ginawa mo, ang tawag na sa mixture na yun na dating concentrated ay diluted solution. Speaking of solvents, FYI, water or H2O is considered in science as the universal solvent. Because water is currently the only known substance that can dissolve many different types of substances. Marami siyang kayang tunawin, kaya tinuturing ang water or tubig bilang universal solvent. Tandaan nyo yan. We now move to suspensions. By definition, suspension is a heterogeneous mixture containing large dispersed solid particles that settle out and can be separated by filtration. At first, these insoluble particles are suspended but ends up being separated or naghihiwalay pag hinayaan mo lang on its own after some time. Either lulubog sila at may ipon sa ibaba kung mabibigat or lulutang sa ibagaw, ibabaw kung magagaan. Imagine a mixture of soil and water as an example. Pag hinalo mo ang lupa sa tubig, sa una maghahalo ito, di ba? Magiging maputik ang itsura ng tubig. Pero after a few minutes, hihiwala yung part na mga lupa sa tubig. And as mentioned, it can be separated by filtration. Mapaghihiwalay mo yung suspension gamit ang pangsala. Okay? So that is what and how suspension works. Kapag nakita kayo ng isang mixture na nagkahiwalay ang laman, like lumutang yung mga insoluble or, or lumubog, ang mixture na yun ay isang suspension. Moving on to emulsion. Like I said at the beginning of this video, wala dati sa listahan ng emulsion. That's because as far as characteristics and properties are concerned, dati siyang suspension. So, ang emulsion ay katulad ng suspension when defined. It is also a heterogeneous mixture of substances that eventually separate or settles out when left undisturbed or pag hinayaan mo lang. Okay? Ang emulsion ay gawa din sa pinaghalong mga bagay na sa paglipas ng oras ay maghihiwalay din. Emulsion is now differentiated though from suspension as a heterogeneous mixture of two liquids. Take note, two liquids that cannot dissolve each other. In short, para hindi tayo malito, sa suspension, solid to liquid na ayaw maghalo. Pero pag emulsion naman, liquid to liquid na ayaw maghalo. Okay? Again, parehas ang idea ng suspension and emulsion. Nagkaiba lang sila sa components. Solid to liquid na naghihiwalay sa suspension, liquid to liquid na naghihiwalay naman sa emulsion. Oil and water mixture is an example of emulsion. Miscibility. Kung sa solution ay may solubility, may miscibility naman sa emulsion. Miscibility means ability of two liquids to dissolve each other. If a liquid can be dissolved by another liquid, they are miscible. But if a liquid cannot be dissolved by the other liquid, they are called immiscible. Again, class, liquid to liquid tayo, okay? Pag pwede maghalo, miscible. Pag ayaw maghalo, immiscible. However, merong mga products na para magawa, kailangan pagsamahin yung mga immiscible substances. So, kailangan ng third party para pagsamahin sila. Kasi kailangan silang pagsamahin kahit ayaw nila. Ang tawag sa mga gagamitin panghalo ng mga immiscible substances ay emulsifier. Emulsifier means an additive used to help immiscible substances to mix together. Example of this product is mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is made from immiscible liquids which are vinegar and oil. Hindi pwede maghalo ang vinegar and oil, pero para magsama sila at makagawa ng mayonnaise, egg white will be added. Thus, it will result to the creation of mayonnaise. And finally, colloids. By definition, colloid means a mixture containing dispersed solid particles small enough to remain suspended and not settle out. Ibig sabihin, ang colloids ay gawa sa mga sobrang liit na mga particles na lumulutang-lutang at hindi agad nagsesettle out. Pansinin, hindi ko sinabi kung homogeneous or heterogeneous ang colloid kasi colloid is a special type of mixture. It is an intermediate type of mixture between solution and suspension sa gitna, colloid. Meaning, partly, isa siyang uri ng solution which is a homogeneous mixture at the same time, partly suspension, which is a heterogeneous mixture. Though, books define colloid still as a form of heterogeneous mixture. So, wag kayo nalang malilito, okay? Kaya siya partly solution kasi evenly distributed ang suspended or floating particles niya. Maganda yung pagkakahalo. Pantay ang pagkakakalat. 
pero partly solution siya, uh, partly suspension siya kasi ang mga particles na ito, sabi ko nga ay nakasuspend or lumulutang. Ang pagkakaiba lang ng college sa suspension, sa suspension, agad na humihiwala yung suspended particles. Pero sa colloid, matagal silang nakalutang. Floating dust or alikabok na nakalutang sa hangin is an example of colloid. Fog or hamog is another example of colloid. Clouds and smoke are also colloids. Other examples of colloids are a glass of milk, gelatin, juice drink, and paint. In addition, colloids have a unique characteristic na wala sa solution. Dahil sa colloids, may mga nakalutang na particles. Pag pinadaanan mo ng ilaw ang colloid mixture, ang mga lumulutang na particles sa mga to ay tatamaan ng liwanag. Kaya mangyayari, makikita mo yung guhit ng ilaw sa kanila. Ang tawag sa phenomenon na ito ay Tyndall Effect. Tyndall Effect, the scattering or reflection of light by the colloidal particles. Nakikita natin yung guhit ng liwanag dahil tumatama ito sa mga particles na lumulutang sa dinaanan ng ilaw. Composition of colloids. If solution is composed of solute and solvent, colloids are also made up of two parts. Dispersed particles, or also called colloidal particles, are the dispersed suspended part of the colloid. Dispersing medium naman is the substance where the colloidal particles were dispersed or distributed. Sa Tagalog, ang dispersed particles yung kumalat, habang yung dispersing medium naman ang pinagkalatan. Concentration of colloids Concentrated colloids appear translucent or cloudy, or opaque or solid. While dilute colloids may sometimes appear transparent or clear like that of a solution. By the way, what are transparent, translucent, and opaque? Do you have any idea? These are properties of matter related to a substance's ability to transfer light or let light pass through. Transparent means you can clearly see what is behind the object because light can easily pass through it. Clear man siya or colored, malinaw mo pa rin nakikita yung nasa likuran niya. Pag ganun, transparent siya. Translucent naman means light can still somehow pass through it but it's difficult to see what's behind the object. So pag translucent, makakatagos pa rin yung liwanag pero mahirap nating makita yung nasa likuran. While opaque means no light can pass through it. So ito yung buo or solid na talaga yung body or color ng object kaya hindi na makakadaan ng liwanag mula sa likuran. Importance and uses of colloids. Colloids play an important role in our daily life. We use them at home and in our daily activities. They are also important in making different products. Here are just some of the many uses of colloids. One is useful in dialysis. Two, use in pottery. 3. Use in the artificial fiber industry and 4. Use in the pharmaceutical industry. These are just examples class. So that class is everything you need to know about solutions, suspensions, emulsions, and colloids. I hope you were able to follow and use this information to help you understand your lesson and be able to do your activities with confidence. That is all for now. This has been another amazing journey we were able to complete. For the meantime, this is Serzi, your science teacher and explorer buddy in everything grade school science. God bless with your home studies and see you all in our next lesson. Class dismissed.